Welcome to the Victory Education Lounge. I'm your host, Maurice, and today we're diving into a part 53 of our series, Mitochondrial Dysfunction and Insulin Resistance. Before we begin, please take a moment to like this video, subscribe to our channel, and share your thoughts or experiences in the comments below. Your engagement helps us create better content and build a supportive community. Ever wondered how the health of tiny organelles in your cells can impact your body's insulin sensitivity? Well, it's all about the mitochondria, the powerhouses of our cells. These microscopic entities are responsible for converting the food we eat into energy that our cells can use, a process known as cellular respiration. This energy is stored in a molecule called ATP, which powers virtually all cellular processes. Now what happens when these mitochondria aren't functioning as they should? This is known as mitochondrial dysfunction, and it can have a significant impact on our metabolic health. When mitochondria can't produce enough ATP to meet the cell's energy demands, it can result in reduced energy production. This can lead to feelings of fatigue and can also disrupt the balance of energy within the cell, but there's more to it. Mitochondrial dysfunction can also lead to increased oxidative stress. Mitochondria produce reactive oxygen species, or ROS, as a byproduct of energy production. Normally, these are neutralized by antioxidants within the cell. However, when mitochondria are dysfunctional, they can produce more ROS than the cell can handle, leading to oxidative damage. Impaired fatty acid oxidation is another consequence of mitochondrial dysfunction. Fatty acids are a major fuel source for many cells, and mitochondria play a critical role in breaking these down for energy. But when mitochondria aren't working properly, this process can be disrupted, leading to an accumulation of fatty acids within the cell. Additionally, mitochondrial dysfunction can lead to altered calcium signaling and disrupted cellular communication. Calcium is crucial for numerous cellular processes, and mitochondria play a key role in regulating intracellular calcium levels. When mitochondria are dysfunctional, it can disrupt this balance, potentially affecting everything from gene expression to cell death. So we see that mitochondrial health is crucial in maintaining insulin sensitivity. When our mitochondrial function is compromised, it can lead to a cascade of metabolic issues including insulin resistance, a condition where our cells become less responsive to insulin, the hormone that regulates our blood sugar levels. Therefore, keeping our mitochondria healthy is of utmost importance for our overall metabolic health. Interested in how we can manage and even prevent mitochondrial dysfunction and insulin resistance? Let's explore some strategies. Firstly, High Intensity Interval Training, or HIIT, is a powerful tool for boosting mitochondrial health. This form of exercise stimulates mitochondrial biogenesis, which is the process of creating new mitochondria, and can also improve insulin sensitivity. However, it's not for everyone. HIIT can be intense and may not be suitable for those with certain health conditions or fitness levels. Next on the list is the ketogenic diet. By forcing the body to use fat for fuel, this diet can improve mitochondrial function and metabolic flexibility. But it's important to note that it's not always easy to maintain and might not be suitable for everyone. Intermittent fasting is another strategy that can promote both mitochondrial health and insulin sensitivity. This approach involves alternating periods of eating and fasting, which can stimulate a process called autophagy, where the body cleans out damaged cells and regenerates new ones. However, adapting to this eating pattern can be challenging for some, and it's not suitable for everyone. Then we have coenzyme Q10 supplementation. CoQ10 is a substance that our bodies naturally produce and is vital for energy production in the mitochondria. Supplementing with CoQ10 can support mitochondrial function but it can be expensive and may interact with certain medications. Alpha-lipoic acid, a potent antioxidant, is another supplement that can support mitochondrial health. It can help manage oxidative stress, a key factor in mitochondrial dysfunction. However, it has potential side effects and may affect blood sugar levels, so it's crucial to consult a healthcare professional before starting. Cold exposure is another strategy that may stimulate mitochondrial activity and brown fat activation. This can be as simple as taking a cold shower or spending time in a cold environment. However, it can be uncomfortable and requires caution, especially for those with certain health conditions. Resveratrol supplementation is another option. This antioxidant, found in the skin of grapes and in red wine, may improve mitochondrial function and insulin sensitivity. Still, more human studies are needed, and the optimal dosage remains unclear. Stress reduction techniques, such as meditation and yoga, can also support mitochondrial health by reducing oxidative stress. However, learning these techniques takes time and may require professional guidance. 
Getting adequate sleep is vital for mitochondrial repair and overall metabolic health. But in our busy modern lives, getting enough quality sleep can be a challenge. Lastly, mitochondrial targeted antioxidants are a new class of supplements designed to directly support mitochondrial health. However, they are not widely available and more research is needed to establish their effectiveness and safety. These strategies offer various ways to improve mitochondrial function and insulin sensitivity, but it's important to remember that individual responses may vary. Always consult with a healthcare professional before starting any new health regimen. It's not about a one-size-fits-all approach, but finding what works best for you and your unique health needs. Let's delve into real-life examples to better understand these strategies. Each story is unique demonstrating that there isn't a one-size-fits-all approach to managing and improving mitochondrial function and insulin sensitivity. First up, we have Sarah, a 40-year-old woman who decided to incorporate high-intensity interval training, or HIET, into her routine. She started with just two workouts a week, but even this small change had a big impact. After three months, she reported having more energy throughout the day and noticed a significant increase in her insulin sensitivity. The downside? HIT was pretty intense and she often found herself feeling exhausted after workouts. However, she was determined and stuck with it, proving that sometimes pushing your limits can yield impressive results. Next we have Mike, a 55-year-old man who took a different route. He decided to try a ketogenic diet, switching his primary fuel source from carbohydrates to fats. Mike noticed a significant weight loss after a few months on the diet. More importantly, his blood sugar levels became more stable, suggesting an improvement in insulin sensitivity. But the ketogenic diet wasn't always easy to maintain. Mike found it challenging to stick to the strict dietary requirements, especially during social events. Nevertheless, he persevered, demonstrating the power of dietary changes in managing metabolic health. Emily, a 35-year-old woman, chose to experiment with intermittent fasting. She adopted a 16 8 fasting schedule, meaning she would eat all her meals within an 8-hour window and fast for the remaining 16 hours of the day. Emily reported feeling sharper mentally and noticed improvements in her metabolic markers over time. However, adapting to the new eating schedule was tough initially and she often found herself feeling hungry during the fasting period. Yet her story highlights the potential benefits of intermittent fasting on mitochondrial health and insulin sensitivity. Then there's David, a 50-year-old man who started taking coenzyme Q10, or CoQ10 supplements. CoQ10 is known for supporting mitochondrial function and energy production. Over time, David reported feeling more energetic and noticed subtle improvements in his exercise performance. But CoQ10 supplementation wasn't cheap, and he had to adjust his budget to accommodate this. Despite the cost, David's experience underscores the potential of targeted supplementation in managing mitochondrial dysfunction. Lisa, a 45-year-old woman, also chose the route of supplementation, but she opted for alpha-lipoic acid. Under her doctor's guidance, Lisa began taking this potent antioxidant known for supporting mitochondrial health. She noticed an improvement in her neuropathy symptoms and a modest improvement in her glucose control. However, she did experience some mild side effects initially. Lisa's story is a testament to the importance of professional guidance when incorporating supplements into your health regimen. Finally, we have John, a 60-year-old man who chose a rather unconventional strategy, cold showers. Known to stimulate mitochondrial activity and brown fat activation, John incorporated cold showers into his daily routine. The initial days were challenging and he often found the experience uncomfortable, but over time, he started feeling more energetic and noticed improvements in his overall well-being. John's story shows that sometimes, the most unusual strategies can yield surprising results. These examples demonstrate that with the right strategies, it's possible to combat mitochondrial dysfunction and improve insulin sensitivity. Each individual found a method that worked for them, showing that personalizing your approach is key. Always remember, it's not about quick fixes, but sustainable changes that can support your metabolic health in the long run. Mitochondrial dysfunction and insulin resistance are complex issues, but understanding them is the first step towards better health. We've delved into the intricate relationship between mitochondrial function and insulin sensitivity, illustrating how disruptions in these tiny powerhouses of our cells can lead to a cascade of metabolic problems. We've also explored a variety of strategies to manage and prevent mitochondrial dysfunction and insulin resistance. From high-intensity interval training and ketogenic diet 
to supplementation and stress reduction techniques, there's a plethora of options available. Remember, it's not a one-size-fits-all solution. Through our real-world examples, we've seen how these strategies can be practically applied and the potential benefits they can offer. But keep in mind, each person's journey to better health is unique. Always consult with a healthcare professional before making significant changes to your lifestyle or supplementation regimen. Before we wrap up, I want to emphasize that the information in this video is for educational and entertainment purposes only. Any health-related decisions should be discussed with a licensed physician. And remember, each person's journey to better health is unique. Once again, thank you for joining us in the Victory Education Lounge. Remember to like this video, subscribe to our channel and share your thoughts or experiences in the comments below. Together, we can work towards better understanding and managing mitochondrial health and insulin sensitivity. This is Morris, wishing you vibrant health and energy.